So, we meet again, Mr. Winch. Back in November of 2014, I took a look at the PS1 Largo Winch game, Largo Winch Commando Sar. A simple little action spy thriller, pretty typical of the time. So of course we needed a second game of a franchise that everybody's heard of, Largo Winch Empire Under Threat, or just Largo Winch, or Largo Winch Adventure Without Limits. What are you called? So how is Largo faring after his encounter with the terrorists in Commando Sar? Are they back in retaliation? Nope, none of that. I'll tell you right now, Empire Under Threat has absolutely nothing to do with the first game. It's not a sequel as, oddly enough, these were both released in 2002. It may have been a case of Ubisoft wanting to bridge the console generation gap that usually occurs, but instead of releasing two versions of the same game, we, thankfully, got two completely different games by two different developers. So released just seven months apart, we're given Largo Winch Empire under threat. Largo. If you're watching this taped will, it means that I'm dead. Neria Winch, Largo's father, has passed away and his multi-billion dollar company, Group W, and all its assets are now in the hands of Largo. No pressure. And it is with great pleasure that I have the privilege of telling you that at this very moment... Largo is presenting a press conference at the Sovereign Hotel New York about the Winch for Humanity operation to deliver 70,000 tons of milk to Genavia, a country or region that apparently does not exist. After the presentation, Largo goes to find his work colleagues in the VIP room to relax. When coming into Empire Under Threat, I initially was expecting similar gameplay to Commando Sar, but no, I was pleasantly surprised to see this as a classic adventure game, with exploring, clue finding and infantry puzzles, and a few other mechanics I'll get into later. You control Largo with either the left stick or the d-pad. If you wish, you can change the setting to the old Resident Evil style tank movement, but why would anyone want to do that? Wow, what a mansion! Again, console generation transition, I suppose. Like how there was an optional top-down view in GTA 3. Any items or objects of interest become highlighted, which can be examined or have the option to take no matter how absurd. Hey, I'm an adventure game kleptomaniac, I want all of the things! Saving options and game notes are stored on Largo's PDA because early 2000s. The after-speech chit-chat is just really a way to introduce the other main characters. Largo goes to check on Jenny Lucas, who spearheaded the operation. You can call me Jenny, Mr. Winch. I thought your speech was dead on. As Largo Winch is a French property, the dialogue may have originally been in French as, in English, the mouth movements are vague at best, just generic flapping open and closed. You're the one that got this whole humanitarian project for Dronavia started, and without your devotion, I'm sure it never would have seen the light of day. Largo is voiced by Robert Burns, who has done a few other known games such as Far Cry, Beyond Good and Evil, and Beyond Two Souls, but here he's not really bringing his A-game. He drones on in this flat, emotionless delivery. Dupuy could have saved some money by just using a text-to-voice program as that's how he sounds. It's pretty cold out here, Jenny, and that dress looks pretty thin. If the graphics were any better, you could take somebody's eye out. Largo, sorry to disturb you, but I've just been told John Sullivan, Largo's second-in-command, informs Largo of Sharon Green's arrival, as she has some bad news concerning a Group W lab in Mexico. Sup, hotness? All the women so far are pretty generous up front. I'm totally okay with this. Mr. Winch, I absolutely have to talk to you. Sharon is shaken by a break-in at the lab resulting in two murders and a researcher going missing. Espionage is afoot. Now a bomb threat has been called in, but this is just a ruse for intruders to get hold of Sharon's document concerning the lab incident. Largo takes it upon himself to investigate this whole matter. You'd think being a famous billionaire you'd have people for this kind of thing. I know we should have taken a taxi, but I needed to get some air. Sharon has a copy of the document on her computer at home, so Largo goes with her. Ah, a nice stroll in Central Park at night. What could go wrong? Freeze! Empty your pockets! Well, this. Shit, a mugger. And this is an adventure game. What do I do? Throw an item at him? Have a conversation? Solve a puzzle? 
turn-based combat? I was not expecting that. This is pretty basic though. Select a target, select an attack type, keeping in mind its success percentage, and attack. There's no way to protect yourself, players will dodge at random, and borrowing a few items you can use later on, this is pretty much a crapshoot. Thank you Random Chance for winning the fight. When reaching Sharon's apartment, I really started to notice how good the environments look. Empire Under Threat uses the Renderware engine, and it's been utilised well. Plenty of detail and good lighting, both dynamic and static. It's a shame that didn't carry across to the character models. Environmental sounds are a little odd. Apart from the usual background drone, little sound effects appear with character proximity. Generic city noises play as Largo approaches the window. Anyway, details on Sharon's computer spurs Largo into investigating the matter further and... Okay. Ooh. Oh yeah, baby. I'ma slap them titties around. Getting information out of people can, initially, be difficult. They either want something or just don't believe your Largo Winch. Don't you know who I am? Largo Winch? Yeah, and I'm the Queen of Saba. I'm Largo Group W Winch, bitch. I'm so embarrassed, Mr. Winch. Between each location, Largo returns to his office. It's like the mission hub, as it were. Hello, Candy. It's nice to see your tits. I mean you. I mean tits. <laughs> Mr. Winch, you're gonna make- Jubblies. Have you seen John Sullivan? Sup, fat ass? John will have useful information for Largo regarding the plot, and some not so useful. What kind of factors make a video game fun and engaging? Business decisions, of course. The government has made us an offer of $500 million. Do we sell Largo? Success or failure, it doesn't matter. The outcome has no bearing on the game. What was the point of that? Needless padding isn't the only problem. A few glitches do occur. When the office lift fails, it sends Largo back to reception, with another Largo model already there. And when examining this toolbox, it states that it's locked, but Largo just opens it anyway. Maybe they should have invested in one of those awesome toolboxes advertised in the Commando SAR review. Holy shit! This isn't just talking and exploring. Infantry puzzles play a part to an almost MacGyver level. Combining items sometimes makes no sense, but if you get stuck, just do the usual adventure game trope of smushing things together until something happens. There's one part where Largo has to escape a secure room. The door opens by pressing two buttons simultaneously, which are at opposite ends, and Largo has to use what's in the room to get it open. The solution is a bit daft, but in the real world it may actually work. And speaking of tropes... Yes, they do this. The old newspaper under the door key retrieval cliché. If you don't know this one, hi, welcome to planet Earth, enjoy your stay. When looking for a hacker in Russia, Largo comes across a ring with a symbol linking it to his father and where he grew up. Sargevain. This is where the game takes a Broken Sword-esque turn. I have no problem with that. It certainly makes a change from bloody investment decisions. Further investigation reveals why the lab was broken into. I'll keep it vague, but something was stolen, and now the humanitarian operation is under threat because of it. This is going to wreak havoc on so many innocent lives, it has to be stopped. The antagonist highly trained soldiers the Night Shift cannot stand against the might of a businessman and his colleagues. I'm a white rich American, therefore I'm better than you. Take that. And that. So, is this better than Commando Sar? Hell yes! This was even developed by Dupuis, who are mainly a comic publisher, and Commando Sar was developed by Rebellion. Good job, Rebellion, a comic company made a better game than you. But I guess they know this as Commando Sar isn't listed on their website. As I mentioned before, this is basically Broken Sword meets MacGyver. And as adventure games go, this isn't bad at all. The turn-based combat feels a little out of place, and the story might have been a bit more engaging if the acting wasn't so bland, but it certainly kept me engaged enough to learn the truth. Like Glass Rose, Empire Under Threat is an unconventional approach to adventure games, but well presented and functions nicely. And as usual, with a game as obscure as this, the PC version isn't available at the usual channels. You'll have to source Largo Winch Quest for Boobies yourselves. Ass. Titties. Ass and titties. Ass, ass, titty, titties, ass and titties. Ass, titties, ass and titties. Ass, ass, titty, titties, ass and titties. Big booty bitches, that's where it gets. Come on, ho, let go to the easy rest where I see ass, titties, ass and titties. Ass, ass, titty, titties, ass and titties. 
Big booty bitches, that's where it gets. Come on, ho, let go the easy rest where I see ass.